Certified at Contracts. Advanced Questions and Answers. Question. Is it recommended to have in a contract based on FIDIC, appointing an external expert acting as the engineer? Or is there no problem in recruiting the engineer from amongst the beneficiary, in our case a public authority? Answer. The basis upon which the 1987 Yellow Book and Red Book is written is that the engineer is appointed by the employer, but that he is independent of both parties, that is, he is an independent third party. In many cases he is required to give impartial decisions. In fact under Clause 2.4 of the Yellow Book he is required to act impartially at all times when exercising his discretion. If the engineer is an employee of the employer? Question. What we are wishing to locate is the model terms of appointment of a DAB published by FIDIC, which are referred to in Clause 20.3a of FIDIC's Conditions of Contract for Design Build and Turnkey, 1st Edition 1995. Please could you clarify this reference? Answer. Model terms of appointment for a dispute adjudication board under the Orange Book were issued as a loose leaf insert and reproduced at pages 151-163 of the guide. FIDIC has moved on. Since then, and the best approach would be to base terms hereafter on those published within the 1999 first editions of the FIDIC contracts. Question. Under what basis does FIDIC offer advice? Answer. FIDIC does not give any official interpretation in respect of any wording in the various documents which it publishes, nor any ruling concerning the rights or wrongs of any actions taken by any parties operating under the terms of a particular contract. If there is any disagreement or potential dispute between the parties which cannot be settled amicably between them, it will normally be a legal interpretation based on the law of the contract which will prevail. Question. To what extent will FIDIC offer advice on its contracts and agreements? Answer. The International Federation of Consulting Engineers expects that people using FIDIC contracts for bids and tenders are fully conversant with the documents. It is generally necessary to prepare particular conditions to accompany general conditions. For this one needs to be experienced in drafting contracts. Question. How can a time limit or date be specified for an event or circumstance that is unforeseeable? Answer. Surely what is unforeseeable before submission of the tender remains so after it especially when referred to subclause 4.12. If additional data on subsurface or hydrological conditions at the site becomes available on or after the tender submission date, it might well be possible thereafter to foresee, based upon such additional data, something which was unforeseeable before the tender submission date, based upon the data available at the base date. Therefore, it is essential to define the time at which the question of foreseeability is to be judged. Question. What are the FIDIC regulations about the role of the engineer? Answer. The FIDIC contracts usually involve the engineer, who has a defined role to play during construction. The designing engineer could be an engineer engaged by the employer just to design the works with the other engineer taking over to supervise the works during construction, or he could be an engineer engaged by the contractor if it is a design build or turnkey type project. In the first case, presumably he would be engaged under the FIDIC white book or something similar and his terms of reference under that should define his role, if any, during the construction period. In the second case, if he is engaged by the contractor, he will presumably be considered to be a part of the contractor's organization carrying, in effect, the contractor's responsibilities in the contract for design. Question. Is it necessary for the engineer to determine the O prior to the date of completion? 
Second question, if the O is not granted within the currency of the contract does it render the time at large and enforcement of liquidated damages as redundant? Third question, what will be relevance and validity of O if the engineer does not assign any reason for the grant of O? What happens to prolongation costs? Answer. The contractor must make his claim within a given time of the event occurring. Red Book Clause 44.2, Yellow Book Clause 26.1. The engineer must then respond with a given time or a reasonable time. He cannot wait until completion to see if the contract actually needs the time extension. If the engineer does not grant a time extension or reply to the contractor's claim within the currency of the contract, it would depend very much on the circumstances. And I would suggest that he cannot call liquidated damages until he has replied to the contractor's claim and definitely rejected it. The question of costs will depend on the circumstances. If the contractor can prove he has suffered extra cost, then maybe he is entitled to reimbursement, but it is not an automatic right and will depend on the circumstances. The intention of the FIDIC conditions is that the matter shall be dealt with as quickly as possible so that the contractor knows if he will get an extension and so that he can then plan the rest of his works accordingly. If the contractor is of the opinion that the engineer is unreasonably delaying the matter, he should read Clause 5.1, both books, and see if this can help. Question. Is there an element of reasonableness in a cost-reimbursable contract, or is the contractor entitled to every penny spent by him? Answer. That such a question cannot be answered in isolation, but must depend upon the detailed provisions of the contract, the law governing it the reasons for any alleged overspend, and, possibly, other matters. Question. Is FIDIC documents include a contractual requirement for the contractor to submit a CPM schedule or program to the project owner? Answer. FIDIC's general conditions of contract are the most widely accepted form in use internationally. They are used for contracts undertaken by a wide variety of contractors, and for a wide variety of types of work. FIDEX general conditions of contract typically include a requirement for the contractor to submit and keep up to date a detailed time program which includes I the order in which the contractor intends to carry out the works, including the anticipated timing of each stage of design, contractor's documents, Procurement, manufacture, inspection, delivery to site, construction, erection, testing, commissioning and trial operation. b. The periods for reviews and for any other submissions, approvals and consent specified in the employer's requirements. c. The sequence and timing of inspections and tests specified in the contract. and d. A supporting report which includes I. A general description of the methods which the contractor intends to adopt, and of the major stages, in the execution of the works, and 2. Details showing the contractor's reasonable estimate of the number of each class of contractor's personnel and of each type of contractor's equipment, required on the site for each major stage. Question. Which provision regulates the employer is not paying the contractor? Which provision regulates the employer is not paying the contractor? Answer. The direct answer is that the FIDEC general conditions contain no provisions regulating payment by a third party. It is the employer who is required to pay the contractor and who has to set up procedures for making payment. Such procedures typically involve a commercial bank, but may also involve other third parties. Question. Is contracting parties can make use of the standard form of FIDIC contracts, amending portions of the conditions of contract? I am particularly concerned about questions of copyright. Answer. 
The FIDIC approach is to leave the general conditions unaltered, and to place all amendments and additions in particular conditions. FIDIC copyrights the entire contract, but grants legitimate users the right to make use of guidance for particular conditions that is included in a section of the published contract. So when you receive a FIDIC contract as a printed document, or as an electronic whole document, you incorporate the general conditions as is, by say printing out the general conditions part from an electronic version, or by adding to tender documents the entire bound contract supplied by FIDIC. You also draw up your particular conditions, possibly by copying text provided by FIDIC in the guidance for particular conditions. This guidance material is copyrighted, but is made available to purchasers of authenticated FIDIC contracts. Question. I would like to know if the electronic version of the plant and design built contract 1st ed. 1999 can be converted from PDF to the Microsoft Word. Answer. What you propose is 100% illegal and not advised. FIDEX PDF contracts are encrypted, and indeed you could print and scan them, but you are then infringing copyright. However, FIDEX would consider agreeing to license your firm to adapt the contract. The fee would depend on the planned usage. It would be at least 1000 US dollars. In general terms, the general conditions of a FIDEX contract should not be modified. The special conditions are for the changes, and the contract gives guidance that you can copy, if you purchase a contract. Question. Do the terms of the FIDEC contract include provision for prime cost items? Answer. The terms of the FIDEC contract do not include provision for prime cost items. Question. If contractor due to his default has not completed his works in the contractual time and has applied for an extension of time due to a delay causes which occurred after the expiry of the time for completion, what is the response as per clause 44.1 of the Red Book 4th edition contract? Answer. Clause 44.1 does not specifically refer to further delay causes which may occur after the expiry of the time for completion. The engineer should consider all the circumstances, including the contract and the applicable law, consult with the employer and the contractor and decide whether the circumstances are such as fairly to entitle the contractor to an extension of time. If no extension is granted then the contractor, so he will be liable for liquidated damages penalties in addition to his own costs. Question. What is responsibility of contractor if a structure like a bridge partially failed after three years of maintenance period? Answer. Three years after the end of the maintenance period. The contractor has completed his work under the contract, it has been accepted by the engineer and employer and the defects liability certificate should have been issued. If the employer thinks that the contractor is, in some way, to blame for the failure then his only recourse is through the liability provisions and procedures under the applicable law. Question. As main contractor and the contract used by the employer is FIDIC Conditions of Contract 1st Edition 1999. The employer has now nominated the MEP Works and instructed us to use the same conditions of contract to administer the subcontractor. Can you advise the legal implications of using the conditions of contract to administer the subcontractor? Answer. The FIDIC conditions of contract are intended to be used for contracts between the employer and the main contractor. The wording is not suitable for use as a subcontract and a considerable number of carefully prepared particular conditions would be necessary. For example the powers and duties of the engineer are not appropriate for a subcontract. The legal position under the applicable law, which is presumably UAE law, 
would also need careful consideration. FIDIC cannot comment on legal matters or on the preparation of particular conditions. If you like this video kindly subscribe to our channel to get a notification for the next videos.